Hello, in this video I want to talk about how we can think about recursive method calls uh, for binary trees. And uh, we had an initial example uh, last time and I've copied this uh, right to here. Um, the way we do things is that we have a, a class called node and then we create node objects to represent every node in a tree. And the way we represent edges are having attributes in a node that refer to other nodes, right? So kind of our attribute reference to another object is how we represent re represent an edge. And, um, and so what we're doing is that we are giving every node a value, and then we have the children here. And what I've done here is a classic way to um, have a, a binary tree, right? I have these two attributes for two children. I'm not gonna do it here, but a general tree, if we were to have one, would be something like this. I might say self.children equals, and I could have like maybe a dictionary or a list or some way of referring to um, other nodes, right? And then I could have like five children or something like that. But if we're doing a binary tree, well, I'm just gonna have the two. Um, then I have this recursive uh, call, draw edges, um, that are kind of drawing all the edges for my tree. And it's calling itself, I'm not gonna look at this code carefully right now because I'm gonna start with some other examples. And, um, and then I could use wrapper SVG uh, to visualize a tree. So let me just create a tree here that we're gonna be working with. Um, I'm going to have a root, which will be um, a node with the letter A. And, um, and if I run this and I look at it, well, um, you, you know what's a little bit silly is I'm not actually drawing the nodes myself yet. <coughs> um, I'm just inferring them when I have edges, right? So I'm not trying to really get anything until I add um, another node. So I'm just trying to say root.left equals a node B. And now I actually have some sort of uh, picture. And, um, and this picture isn't quite complete because, well, regardless of whether I have a right or a left node, uh, Graphviz doesn't know about that. That's just I'm drawing an edge. So one thing I'm going to do here is when I'm uh, drawing a left edge, I'm just going to call it L. And when I'm drawing a right edge, I'm just going to call that R. And that way we can actually tell um, for kind of these de degenerate uh, binary trees. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have a right child. So I'm gonna say right equals another node, uh, C. Um, maybe I'll go uh, root dot left, which is, that gets me to B, uh, dot right equals D, right? And I can kind of get this simple tree, right? And, and graph is just deciding how to uh, draw that. Maybe not the way I would have drawn it, but uh, but that's fine. All right, so I can I have this nice picture of a binary tree. and and so I've already written these kind of complicated recursive functions and that will let me view the tree. And I did that because I want to start with a picture. Um, but, but let's think about if we wanted to have a function called, um, or a method called dump. So I'm going to say root.dump. And what it should do is just print uh, all the node values, right? So it'd be like A, B, C, D is what I wanted to do for this particular tree. And, and so that's going to be recursive. And so what I want to do is I'm going to write this method, and then we're going to think carefully about what order um, the node values are going to get printed in, right? So I'm going to say define dump uh, self, and um, and maybe the first thing I'll do is well, I'll just print self dot value. So when I run that, I, I get a. Okay, so no recursion yet. Um, the next thing I can do is I can say, um, I can do my recursive calls, right? I can, you know, I print it myself. Let's ask my children to print themselves. So I can say self.left.dump and self.right.dump. And, um, well, I guess I got B and then I got an error. So let me look at this. Uh, none type object has no attribute dump. Okay, and that was here. And, um, well, it's saying that something doesn't have dump, so I don't have dump here. So basically what it's saying is self.left must be none. And, which is a little bit funny, right? Because when I look up here, I say root.left equals this node, so that shouldn't be none. Um, the, the clue in terms of what's going on is I actually see that, if I read through the stack trace, I see it was recursive, right? Um, what happened? Here I called dump, which called the dump method on A, which called another dump method. So so the problem really isn't my A node, it's not my root, right? I mean, this is not my problem. 
the problem, I guess, is really that, you know, I can't have left left, right? My node B does not have a left, and then that's why I can't call it, right? B dot left is none, so this fails. So, so really what I should do here is I should have some checks, right? I should say something like, you know, uh, if south dot left not equal to none, I can do that. And uh, if self dot right not equal to none, then I'll do this other piece. And I do that and I actually get kind of all my values print out. A, B, A, B, D, C. Maybe not the obvious order, right? Maybe it's a little surprising, right? That C was printed after after D. And, and so what I want to do is I want to think about, well, how, how can I read this code? How, how could I have figured that out without actually running it? That is trying to be A, B, D, C. And, and so for that, I'm going to switch over to uh, my iPad. I'm just trying to kind of trace through through this method, right? And so let me let me do that. I'm going to switch. Uh, oh, sorry. Just a moment. Oh, uh, I see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. So here's my iPad. Um, here I have that same method, right? I'm not really showing, you can see there's self there, but I'm not really showing the class in front of it. Um, this is the exact same code I just wrote. Um, I, I can see I have my uh, tree here, right? A has B and C as children. Uh, B has D as a right child. And uh, root, which is A, I'm calling dump, right? So, so let me try to trace through this and see what's happening. Uh, the very first thing is that I'm doing a root.dump. And... Um, and so maybe the way I'm going to write that is instead of saying root, I'm just going to say I'm calling a dot dump. Okay. And then I'm interested in, well, what, what all does that call? And, and kind of looking up at the code here, I see it does calls three things. Um, it, it, I'm going to print something. That's the first thing. And then, you know, both my left and my right are not equal to none. So then I'm going to do two recursive calls there. Right, self dot left is just you know b dot dump, self dot right is, is c dot dump. So so I'm gonna kind of write this down. I'm gonna maybe draw it like this. I'm making three calls to. So well, the first thing was print a. I'm not gonna bother with quotes here. I think that uh, just trying to keep it simple. And uh, then the next thing I did was I called b dot dump. And then finally I called C dot dump. That was kind of the first level of the call graph. And, and so now I have to worry about, well, what does B dot dump do and what does C dot dump do? I'll start with B dot dump. So here I am, I'm, I'm calling B dot dump. And, and so as I kind of go through here, I see, well, I'll print off B. This is false, right? B doesn't have a left child, right? So this is false. So nothing happens here. Uh, B does have a right child, so I am going to call right.dump. So b.right.dump is D, right? So so this, I guess, just does two things, right? It, 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 it's going to call a print and then make it's going, to, it's going to make a recursive call, right? So this is going to call print B. And then it's also going to call d.dump, right? d.dump. Okay. Um, so, so at this point, right, I still have kind of two of these that I haven't evaluated. Right? I have d.dump and c.dump on the table. Let, let, let's look at c.dump first. It doesn't really matter the order I reason through these. When I call c.dump, c is a leaf, right? It doesn't have any children. So I'm going to print c. And then both of these things are false. So printing C, I guess, is the only thing I do, right? So this is just trying to do what? It's trying to print. It's trying to print C. Okay. Um, what about that? Was this one? What about D dot dump? Right. So I kind of come back here. D is kind of a similar situation, right? It's a leaf. It has no children. So it's trying to print itself. And then these things are going to be false. So it won't do anything, right? So so really, all this does is it, it prints D. So I'm going to say print, print D, right? And, and so now, 
right? After I've, I've kind of gone through all these things, I can think about the order in which my prints happen, right? What is my output? Right, and so, well, the first thing, right? I can try and draw these lines here. The first thing is that I print A, and, um, and then after that, I'm gonna print B. And then after that, this was kind of the surprise, right? We print D before we print C. And, and hopefully you can, you can kind of see why now, right? So, so as I'm kind of doing these prints, right? It kind of goes down, well, you can see I go left before I go right. And so when I go left, I really go all the way left and I'm kind of doing all of these things uh, before I come back and actually print off, print off C. Um, now, this code uh, would have a very different order. It would still print all the same things, but it have a very different order if I moved that print down there to the bottom. So let me do that. Uh, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna move that to the bottom. And uh, let's think about what happens in this case. Um, in this case, well, I guess I'm still, oh, excuse me. I'm still, I'm still starting with root.dump and the root is A, right? So, so I'm gonna write that down first. So the first thing I do is um, A.dump. And then tracing through here, maybe a little more quickly this time, you know, I have the left child B, so I'm gonna call B.dump right child c so c dot dump and then finally print a right so so i have my three things uh which are b dot dump c dot dump and then finally i'm going to actually print a okay so i can kind of trace through these um, okay, what about b dot dump? I'm kind of looking through this code now. Uh, b doesn't have a left, but I'm going to call right dot dump, or right dot dump is the same thing as d dot dump, right? So I'm going to say d dot dump and print b, right? So I'm going to call I'm going to call d dot dump. And I am going to print B. Okay. All right. So, so just like kind of last time, I ended up with the last things I have to figure out are D dot dump and C dot dump. And, and both of these, both of these don't have any children, right? D doesn't have any children. You know, C doesn't have any children. So in both these cases, right, these conditions will be false. In both these cases, I'm just printing off what the node is, right? So, so in both these cases, I just have one print. This one prints, oops, this one prints D. And this one, this one prints C. So again, if I go to my output at the end, what do I get? So in this case, I'm gonna have D first. Right? I'm, I'm kind of almost starting from the bottom, right? In this recursive call, I'm kind of starting from the bottom and then it's going to work its way back up. So I'm going to get uh, D first and then B and then C and then A, right? And this kind of thinking where we're kind of doing these recursive calls, this is going to come up a lot when we start searching for data. What is the order we're searching through nodes? Uh, and, and that's going to affect the performance, right? Kind of in, in whether we find something quickly uh, or or slowly. Okay, so I'm just trying to switch back and just kind of check D, B, C, A. Is that what we actually get if I switch back here? If I, um, if I kind of switch this down here, D, B, C, A. Let's hope I got this right. And sure enough, D, B, C, A. Right, so we're gonna be doing lots more problems like this soon uh, for kind of more practical purposes.